The Puppet Masters by Thomas Ligotti Read by Jeff Clark The one sitting all cockeyed was telling me things. Of course, its soft and carefully sewn mouth was not moving. None of their mouths move unless I make them. Nonetheless, I can still understand them when they have something to say, which is actually quite often. They have lived through things no one would believe. And they are all over my room. This one is on the floor, lying flat on its little stomach with its head propped within the crux of its two hands, a tiny foot waving in the air behind. That one is lazily sprawled high upon an empty shelf, leaning on its elbow, a thin leg of cloth peaked like a triangle. They are everywhere else, too, in the fireplace that I would never light, in my most comfortable chair which they make seem gigantic, even under my bed, a great many of them, as well as in it. I usually occupy a small stool in the middle of the room, and the room is always very quiet. Otherwise it would be difficult to hear their voices, which are faint and slightly hoarse, as might be expected from such throats as theirs. Who else would listen to them and express what they have been through? Who else could understand their fears, however petty they may seem at times? To a certain degree, then, they are dependent on me. Patiently I attend to histories and anecdotes of existences beyond the comprehension of most. Never, I believe, have I given them reason to feel the subtlest fluctuations of their anxieties, the least nuance of their cares, have not been accounted for by me and given sympathetic consideration. Do I ever speak to them of my own life? No, that is, not since a certain incident that occurred some time ago. To this day I don't know what came over me. Absent-mindedly I began confessing some trivial worry. I've completely forgotten what it was. And at that moment all their voices suddenly stopped, every one of them, leaving an insufferable vacuum of silence. Eventually they began speaking to me again and all was as it had been before. But I shall never forget that interim of terrible silence, just as I shall never forget the expression of infinite evil on their faces which rendered me speechless thereafter. They, of course, continue to talk on and on, from ledge and shelf, floor and chair, from under the bed and in it. If they should ever stop talking to me again, I think I would go mad. Still, my greatest wish is to engage them in a colloquy of horrors. But I cannot make their mouths and my own move at the same time. <laughs>